You're still watching Ways Now. 2nd of December marks the International Day for the Abolition of Slavery, adopted by the General Assembly of the United Nations. Now, according to International Labor Organization, more than 40 million people worldwide are victims of modern slavery. Although modern slavery is not defined in law, it is used as an umbrella term covering um, practices such as forced labor, debt, bondage, forced marriage, and human trafficking. Now, the focus of this day is on eradicating contemporary forms of slavery, such as trafficking in persons, sexual exploitations, the worst form of child labor, forced marriage, and forced recruitment of children for the use, uh, for use in armed conflict. Yeah. Um, this is a very important day. Absolutely. It's really and encompasses a lot. It's a lot. In fact, I was just thinking when I saw this, I said, look at, there are so many things going on today. You would think that ah, this is not supposed to be happening, but it, it still exists. And I just keep hoping that, you know, as we continue to talk about it and raise awareness, you know, it will be the eradicated. One that really hits me is the child labor. Child labor, and yes. And a lot of people are engaged. Oh, with. yes. Yeah. People engaged the services of children as little as 13, 14. What is 13? Nine. I've you know, seen nine. I've, I've, I've been used people as tell nannies. me, I know, yes, that's what I'm saying. People tell me, no, don't hire any girl that is old. I said, I can never hire somebody under the age of 18. Mm. Even for it's your good. Lawyer. good. But even for the good of your children, mm -hmm. how can a 13 year old protect a child? I said, Lami, you, are, a child. you are too far. I'm telling you that they are employing nine year olds. If there's an emergency nine, in the house, how is that eight. child expected yeah. to handle it? So we'll keep on talking about it. It's, it's something that we need to talk about. Let me go with Nami first, and then I'll come to Nkechi. What did you find first in the news? Today? Okay, um, I took it in a rush. Yeah. <laughs> I took it in a rush. I read it in a rush. But the crux of the whole, the whole gist of it is they actually, the House of Reps members, led by an able speaker. Professor, I said Professor Honorable Femi Bajabia Miller, went to see our able president in his villa to explain to him the need why he should come and explain to Nigerians the spate of the insecurity. insecurity in Nigeria. And I found it very, and the way it was so patronizing, saying to us, he's a Democrat, don't worry, we would confirm the date, we would this matter is as a matter is a matter of national urgency mm. that any serious president would drop everything he's doing to address. So why are they putting dates, putting us in breaking news? I said, is this supposed to be a breaking news? Is it not a, is it not an entitlement? Are they leaders or self? They don't understand. I think most of the Political actors in Nigeria do not understand their leadership. Role. Yeah. They don't understand leadership it. Leadership is about service. It's service to humanity. They have even lost their sense of humanity. Forty-three. I would choose to go with what the forty-three. Yes. Forty-three people, people were died in. Ua, have you tried to use a blade on yourself? Mm. Just to mm. use a blade on yourself. Mm -hmm. No, I can't even watch when a chick it's is very, being killed. It's very gruesome. Gruesome mother, and don't forget. These people are farmers. Mm -hmm. It is directly linked to food security, security. in Nigeria. Yeah, which we talked about. So it is a matter of urgency that the president, he doesn't need to you be, didn't need you don't to need to appeal him. to yes. him. So they went to appeal to him to come and do Address what them. is yeah. needed. And we as Nigerians are supposed to be anticipating when our evil president. I don't know how we are going to wait out these two and a half years. <laughs> Honestly, because add two more years to my age, <laughs> okay. <It is> well. <laughs> Jennifer, what did you find for us in the news? Um, the past pre president of the Senate, Dr. Saraki, mm. said that he plans to bring in um, past politicians, businessmen, and the youths into the PDP party. Mm -hmm. Past. <laughs> So basically, okay. his plan is for those who um, have shown interest in building the nation and those who have shown interest in joining the party, he intends to bring all of them together. Those that have had grievances in the past, all he wants to do is to unite them together. And then he's told them that they should put aside their personal ambition mm -hmm. and focus on the country. Ooh, can I talk? I'm itching to talk. <laughs> That new PDP they are setting up is dead on arrival. <laughs> Why do you say so? Where he lost me was past politicians. He's now trying to appeal to our sentiments, mm. saying youth. Which kind of youth is going to go? I thought he was going to say a new party. 
But I don't want to see all those old politicians. They should please give a breather. They should give room for the young people and just take a back seat and do, you know, probably take adversary roles. Mm. They should please stop. No, no, no. So it is, that is going to be it's going to be attractive to us because it's saying youth. Any youth should not go and join them. <laughs> <laughs> because the way it looks, the way it yeah. looks, it looks yes. like they're still going to take control. Mm. Of course, still going to be in charge. No, they because know. You've been in they charge know where twenty twenty three is going. Yeah. It's you've calculation. Been you've been in charge for a while, and nothing has changed. So why do you feel mm. the need to be in charge New now? BDP. Like she said, they take an advisory role. For those that are coming up, the youth that that want to join in, the least you can do is just guide them. That's Thank all. Thank you. That's all you Leave need to stage. do. I don't think you it's need okay. to be there. We are done. Okay. We are done. 2023. In line with 2023. We took, it, we took a, a story. Uh, I don't know who took that story now about our elections. You know. So when um, LC, our producer, sent this story, I just said, I, I, like, the, I like the story. It okay. says, Ghana's essential workers vote early ahead of Monday's mm, national election. That's so you know, I, I, I think it was, uh, who took that story now? I think it was Sanzi that took it on Monday when we were talking about our INEC um, chairman being re, um, re reappointed and all of that. And we we're talking about, you know, what are like the innovations that's going to happen in, in Nigeria's politics. So, you know, before we were so quick to compare ourselves with the U.S. and all of that, this is Ghana. Ghana. Mm. This is Ghana. I'm so excited. You know, there are about... Um, um, 12 candidates, including the current president. I think the strongest opponent is um, John Mahama. Mahama, you know, so he's the former president of um, Ghana as well. So I, I'm, I'm looking forward to this. And I'm, I'm happy that, you know, people are thinking. Electoral processes has to be easy. I can decide to say, you know what, I will vote from where I am. Yeah. And they will, my vote will count. Look at what happened in the U.S. where mail-in votes and all of that were happening. I know we've not got into that stage yet. But can we move past this stage? Because, you know, a lot of times I think the reason we've not been able to structure our electioneering process is because we want to take advantage of that um, chaos to rig the elections. Yeah. What about, right? what about so, people in diaspora? That's what I'm saying. So far, you are a Nigerian. As long as why you are a Nigerian, why can't you be able to vote, vote anywhere, anywhere in the world? world. You why can't be you be able to vote. to vote anywhere in the world? And these essential workers would cover medics, yes, and um, police officers that yes. would be on duty, duty. on that day. So why can't they do it? So I think that's so, so this innovative. This is so innovative. I must yeah. say kudos to Ghana, and I'm hoping that Nigeria. We claim to be the what's it called? The hmm. giant the of, rat Africa. of Africa. <laughs> ah, no, don't say that. So let us let us show the giant, the giant nature, and you know take a cue from Ghana and build our electoral process. Absolutely, mm. they amazing. know what to do. It's, it's just the it's wheel. Amazing because you know, um, America was in the news a um, few yeah. weeks ago. Um, about the um, the election that took place, and then everyone was like, "Oh, we, we want to be like them. We want to be like ah. them." But our neighboring country. Ghana is just taking here. a step. Exactly. Absolutely. So, please. All right. So we'll take a short break now. When we return, we'll be speaking to our guests and we'll hear their views on, um, what's it called? Um, honorarium of these royalties now. Royalties. <laughs> Thank royalties. you. <laughs> royalties and um, contractual agreements in Nigeria. Stay with us. We'll be right back.